Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Ruby from Scratch. In this video right here, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to work with files and more specifically YAML files and why would we wanna use something like a YAML file. So uh, YAML is, uh, I think it's a pretty basic thing in Ruby. Uh, it's, you know, we use it all the time in Rails application and uh, a lot of people I talk to still don't know what it is and why do we need to use YAML files. So in this video, I'm gonna explain why we need it. All right, so let's get started. So basically, the reason why we use YAML file is because it can represent uh, data types in Ruby. Uh, I, I'm not sure if, if YAML is used in other programming language, languages, perhaps it is, uh, but it can represent, uh, you know, for example, a hash in Ruby or an array uh, in Ruby or even represent integers and stuff like that, right? So it's basically you store a bunch of data in a file and when you load it up, it automatically is represented correctly in your code. Now, let me show you what I mean. If we just have a, a file over here, uh, just some random file, and if I wanna represent it with a hash, so I'll type something like this in, uh, let's say a blah. If we load this in just as a normal text file, this is not gonna work, right, in Ruby. This is not gonna be a hash. You either have to put it in Ruby code, uh, so which we can do. So for example, over here, what we're trying to do is we're trying to represent these, um, if you will, these mappings of names uh, in Ruby. So um, what we can actually do, the most straightforward way to do it would be to just type out the hash. So men's first name, and we have a hash with the alphabet. So A represents Davos, right? So that's just a, a quick example. And what we can then do is we can just uh, do men's, first name and we can do something like B and basically this is going to put out Viserys right uh, and what we can do is we can use it in, a, in conjunction with multiple uh, data sets so we can do like house name and basically we are going to represent this with uh, let's say A and then I can do something like B um, and basically what this is going to the first one is going to output Viserys of house Cligan. So we can actually already start to build our little game. So what we can do is something like um, like this. So we can represent, uh, we can execute Ruby code within our string using this hash and then this uh, curly braces over here. And we're gonna do something like um, in the house and then another one. And then we just put this code over here, just like that. Now, basically what this is gonna say is Viserys, uh, let's change this to of house of house Kligan. Or if I change this to A, it's gonna give me Davos of house Kligan, right? Uh, so basically uh, what we're doing here is, uh, let's imagine for a sec that we have A to Z in, all, in both of these. We can then just pass the first initial and the last initial into the, the corresponding hashes and get the thing that we want. It's gonna tell us our name in, in Game of Thrones and what house we belong to, right? But the problem is generally it's cleaner, uh, it's better practice to keep the code clean, which means data, uh, generally persisted data, uh, is going to be represented in a file. So for example, a YAML file could represent this set of data for us. Instead of us having to type this into the code, uh, we can basically uh, save that file into uh, a YAML file and we can load that file and then just use that as like hashes and arrays in uh, in Ruby. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that now. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna do got names.yaml. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is uh, basically I'm gonna do um, men's first name. And here, uh, all we have to do is we'll say A. All right, so we can use something like this to represent um, you know, our data. This would equate to a hash in Ruby. So we could, we could put the, you know, this key over here and uh, we would get the hash. Now, why would we want to use something like this? Why would we want to put this in a flat file? Um, so basically, uh, it's generally good to, first of all, it's good to keep your data away from your code. Uh, and basically, 
for example, if we use this set of data somewhere else, we have a central source of truth, right? So the data is always going to come from here. It's not going to be intermingled with the code. And then, you know, if you, if the code changes and then this data source changes, and then we have to go and change the data somewhere else in other application. So we have a single source of truth. It's represented in a file. Every piece of code that runs that represents, that is references, this code references this file. And if we have another piece of code somewhere else that needs to use this set of data, it's going to get the same piece of data. That's one, you know, that's one very, very big reason uh, to, to use something like this. And uh, a more advanced concept of this would be to have something like a database. But our solution over here is very something very simple. So we don't need a database. We can just use a flat file like this. And uh, in database, you have the same kind of thing. You have, uh, you know, columns that represent, uh, you know, an array that can represent a hash. So in, in Postgres, you can have H store and you can have an array of H store even. And you have uh, columns with string and integers and all that kind of stuff. So over here, we have the same kind of thing. Um, so for example, if I put one over here, when I get the hash, the value here is going to be actually an integer one. But in this case, we're going to use a string. So, okay, now you guys understand why you want to use a flat file uh, to store our data. So once we do that, um, you know, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. I'm going to fill this out, uh, out off the screen. And basically, I'm going to show you guys how to load this file into your code. Right, guys, so I filled out my flat file with all the data that we need. Uh, basically, I just copied everything in here and uh, put it in my YAML file. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to try and load this data into our application so we can reference it. We can reference that data. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, comment out all this stuff. Uh, so um, just like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and load this file and save it to this particular. Actually, I'm going to rename that. So I'm going to like got uh, data. So uh, Game of Thrones data, if you will. Uh, so it's not like I got data or anything like that. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to load the file. And uh, so I'm going to type out the code and I'm going to explain each step for you guys. So what I'm going to do is yaml dot load. And basically, I'm going to do a file dot open. And basically, we need to have a way of referencing this particular file here. Uh, but what we need to do is we need to reference it like, you know, kind of like an absolute path. Uh, so what we can do is we can use something like file uh, dot uh, dir name, and then file. So basically, uh, what this is, is it's going to get the directory name of like this current file. When you do underscore underscore file like this, it's this file, the file that we're working on right now. We wanna get the directory that this file is in. And that's what gives us this uh, file DR name. And then what we wanna do is uh, we actually wanna do a file.join. Um, and uh, basically we wanna do a got names.yaml. Close out the parentheses. So we have three over here opening. So we have to close all of them three to just like that. And uh, basically what this is going to do is it's going to load the entire data set from this file, right? Uh, so uh, let me show you what that what that looks like. So I'm going to do a puts got data over here. And I'm just going to head into the terminal. And uh, so I've done that once already. I'm going to do Ruby and then game.rb. Um, okay, it says that we have uninitialized constant YAML. Okay, no problem. What we're going to do is we're going to require the YAML libraries in the standard Ruby library. So YAML, just like that. And we're going to do Ruby and load the game up just like that. And so check this out. We have a hash. And over here we have this key, men's first name with, you know, Davos. And basically all the data set that we have. So what we can actually do is, uh, for example, I want to put out just the men's uh, first name. Uh, I can do something like puts got data and then uh, men's first name. So we have to use a string here because in our YAML, we didn't say that it's going to be a symbol. If we want it to be a symbol, we can. We just add this colon, which is why all these ones here have the colon in front of them. So uh, now I can use a symbol just like that to load that data set. Uh, so now uh, I'm going to try that again. So I'm just going to comment this one out and I'm going to do uh, Ruby game.rb. And bam, now we just get the men's first name. So we can use this, uh, you know, in, in our code, right? So we can do something like Z. Uh, so let's see what happens. We're going to get Jojen, right? So we're so close now uh, to finishing our game. 
Uh, but finishing our game is not enough, right? What we want to do is we want to clean up this code. Um, there's a lot going on and like over here we're doing all kinds of things and it's all mixed in one file. It's not organized. So basically in the next episodes after this episode, so I'm going to finish this off and then in the next episodes we're going to look at how we can clean all this up. We're going to use some uh, basic concepts like uh, methods and uh, classes and modules and you know, all that kind of stuff uh, that will help us uh, clean up our code. Now, if you want to know what these of each of these does, uh, you're free to uh, come inside over here in your in the code and you're f uh, free to experiment. So for example, if you want to know what file.join output, so you can do file.join uh, file.br name file and uh, we can do something like got names.yaml and uh, close that out like that. Yeah, that's it. And basically, if we go over here and do Ruby game dot RB, we're going to get this see, got names. So basically, it's, uh, you know, within the same directory as the game dot RB file. And we're just loading the got name. So that's what that file dot join represents. Um, OK, so now we've got the data. What we need to do is basically we need to output the text. Right. So we're going to have, uh, so let's say men's first name is equal to got data men's first name and then uh, we're gonna have the house name is equal to got data house name now I need to go and change the data over here and the house name basically we need to use a symbol over here and this one here as well symbol um, just like that all right so that's gonna be pretty much it. Um, now I can, uh, you know, I can even start to use our first initial and last initial. Now, the problem is our first initial and last initial are caps and they're a string. So what we need to do is we need to use this uh, a Ruby a string method. Um, and so for example, first uh, initial, and we're going to do a down case. So this is going to make it all lowercase and I'm going to do two sim. So we're going to convert a string to a symbol using something like this. So I'm going to do the same over here. Uh, for the last uh, initial and uh, yeah so basically I'm just gonna copy that paste that in there and then do last initial dot down case dot two sim so let's check out what this outputs right so I'm gonna do puts over here and uh, yeah that's gonna be pretty much it so let's try and run this Ruby game dot RB Jojen of house Tully right awesome so our game pretty much works now we need to fill out the other stuff like the title with the birth date and you know we need to add more data uh, so there's a lot more we have to do to make this game complete and in the next episode i'm going to be showing you guys how to do all that stuff all right guys so if you guys enjoyed this episode don't forget to like share and subscribe and uh you know don't forget to share this with your friends and family and i know it's been a while um, but you know, last week was pretty intense with the N plus one stuff. This week we're back to doing the basic Ruby stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll see you guys in the next episode.